This is Matt Walsh with your Minute with the Mayor for Thursday, January 7th. We've decided that we may do some Council Bluffs history. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we spoke with the city's community development director, Brandon Garrett, about his online discovery of a Council Bluffs wooden nickel that dated back to 1936. And I think people found that story interesting. So I am going to do a follow-up to that and, and uh, tell you one of my favorite stories about Council Bluffs. To recap what we talked about, Brandon, in 1836, the Potawatomi Indian tribe, together with the Chippewa and the Ottawa, who were living in Illinois and Indiana, ceded their possessions in those two states, and the tribes were reassigned to new territory in southwest Iowa. Because these particular Indian tribes were considered to be friendly, Christian missionaries and fur traders quickly arrived to engage in commerce with the Indians. That 1836 trading post was in the immediate vicinity of what would become Council Bluffs and was then known as Traders Point. Now flash forward in history to our city in 1936. The country had just gone through the depression and Council Bluffs citizens were hungry for some local activity. The Council Bluffs Park Board organized a centennial exposition to commemorate the 100th anniversary of white settlers arriving in Southwest Iowa. The Parks Board planned a parade they held a series of parties. They scheduled various programs depicting those early Trader Point days. And the wooden nickel we talked about last week was created for that centennial exposition. Unfortunately, the city-sponsored event wasn't well attended and when the books were closed, the Council Bluffs Parks Board had lost $12,000, which was a post-depression amount that the city of Council Bluffs could not afford to repay. In today's dollars, that loss would have been more than $200,000. Five years after the Centennial Exposition, that debt remained on the city's books and the creditors were getting impatient. City leaders, desperate for a solution, contacted New York mobster Meyer Lansky. Lansky, nicknamed the mob's accountant, was one of the most famous and financially successful mobsters in U.S. history. Lansky, along with Charles Lucky Luciano, had established the National Crime Syndicate in New York, also known as La Cosa Nostra and or the American Mafia. The Mafia's criminal influence spread across the nation and beyond. Lasky had developed a reputation for assisting struggling municipalities by offering them financial aid in exchange for permission to operate a business in their town. After meeting with city leaders, Lansky was given a five-year lease on the city's Dodge Park Fairgrounds, which was located just north of Broadway on 40th Street, on the same site as the old Playland Park. Lansky's plan was to build a dog racing track with grandstands, and he agreed to pay the Council Bluffs Parks Board $1,000 a week from his dog track profits so that the board could reimburse their Centennial Exposition creditors. One small problem was that gambling was illegal in Iowa. Lansky's genius was to make the illegal look perfectly fine. He had found a way to get around Iowa's gambling law. Here's how it worked. Rather than buying paramutual tickets, a racing fan could purchase either a $2 or a $5 option towards the purchase of a dog. The options available to be purchased were for win, place, and show finishes, and if a dog did well, its purchase price went up. If a dog performed poorly, its purchase price option was valueless. Option holders could sell their options back to the track for a profit if their dog did well. In 1941, with his leasing agreement in hand, Lansky established Dodge Park Kennel Club, and he spent $50,000 building a grandstand and a racetrack. Lansky's business operations did not always follow suit with his gangster reputation. By all accounts, Lansky ran a clean business in Council Bluffs. He never cheated his customers, he wouldn't even allow beer to be sold at the track, and any employees that worked for Lansky had to live in Council Bluffs. The Lansky system turned out to be a cash cow, and the track brought large tax revenues into the city's coffers. Rapidly paying off the debt associated with the 1936 Centennial Exposition, and they also uh, repaid the mortgage on the city's newly constructed Council Bluffs City Hall, which is our current City Hall building. In 1944, Council Bluffs voters elected a reformer by the name of William Byers as its mayor. 
Byers refused to look the other way. He pointed out that Lansky's supposedly legitimate business was still, at the end of the day, gambling. He immediately canceled the track's 1944 and 1945 seasons, and the money faucet turned off. Despite his reputation as a major organized crime figure for nearly 50 years, Meyer Lansky never was convicted of any crime more serious than illegal gambling, and he died quietly of old age. If you're a fan of the blockbuster movie The Godfather, the Hyman Roth character was inspired by Meyer Lansky. Our local Lansky's restaurant was named after Meyer, and you can see a picture of Lansky on the giant multi-pictorial mural near the senior center on Worst Street between Main Street and 4th Street. Spoiler alert, he's the guy that looks like a gangster. Maybe the most interesting tidbit of all is that at Tom Hannafin's River's Edge Park, which is very near the former site of Lansky's Dodge Park Kennel Club, there was the donor panels commemorating the cash contributions from individuals and businesses who donated money to the construction of Hannafin's Park includes Meyer Lansky as a $1,000 donor. $1,000, which ironically is the same amount that Lansky had agreed to pay the City of Council Bluffs for one week's gaming tax. That's your minute with the mayor. Be kind to somebody when you go out in public, make sure you wear a mask.